Garble Doozer in the house. Garble Doozer, you there? Mr. Adam? Do we have connection? 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Yes. We have connection. All right. So, um, Adam, if you could be the, the court gesture and post up. Poor, huh? If you can uh, post up the comments, I appreciate it. How about this? Let's get the internet connection going first, and I'll get into it. So, Adam, can you see? What do you think? Is it clear? Breaker, breaker, one, nine. Got two minutes going in this vid. Am I like... All right, so for a little better now. It's clear on my end. Is it clear on your end? Sometimes these phones, the camera needs to be adjusted. It looks better. All right, Adam. Who else we got aboard here? I see somebody else got eyeballs on the situation. Yeah, it was. I'm going to put some extensive, highly powered internet in my workshop to overcome my magnets here. But um, do I get a shout out from who else is on there? Who's that number two right there? That's somebody. Well, maybe they don't want to be known. Alrighty, so guys, I got some cool stuff going on with some magnets here. Um, for starters, you want to see, uh, uh, I'm going to do a magnetic transfer. And this is just, just happened. I thought it was like way cool. And um, Adam, check this out. You ready? So this is, this is some, some shit. Let's see how heavy that is. Let's check that on the scale. I got a little scale right here. Cause this is heavy. All right, if I was guessing, if I was guessing on this, it's inch and a, inch and a half square stock. Like Ed's PMH, that's what he called for. Inch and a half square stock. I never thought about the reason inch and a half square stock it has a certain inductance about this metal being that square of surface area and depth. We'll get into that later, Adam, but I know you know what I'm talking about, right? <clears throat> so let's figure out how we're gonna, it's hard to work with one hand. I guess I should get me a little, I'm gonna order me a little, couple little tripods that, well, something that holds the phone up. So if I was gonna do that to that, let me see, this is a neodymium magnet. I don't think that's got the lifting power, but let's check. Who thinks that neodymium is going to lift this piece up? You think the neodymium is strong, strong enough, guys? Fire and hole. All right. All right, we got our scale on. Here we go. Oh, shit. This is, this is, this is at least gallon here. Oh, no, that's too heavy. Ah, oh, it's too, a neodymium can't even hold it, guys. Woo! NASCAR. All right, let's check it out again. So let's see what pull force we get. What gals? Yeah, no, it's 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 not look, we're already at almost two pounds. Oh wait, oh 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 Really? One point? No, we're locked in. We're locked in. We gotta, we gotta reset this bitch. That ain't no fucking pound, almost two pounds. Let's start this over again. 
All right, this thing likes to lock in. Let's start from scratch. Come on, there we go. Left, 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 left. All right, 206. Two pounds. Some bitch of neodymium. You see that though? The neodymium couldn't hold it in the beginning. Weak. So what did it do? What just happened in front of our eyes? You know what I mean? What 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 just happened? So that neodymium took a while for it to pull. Yo, Tommy in the house. It it's what's up, Tommy? Wanna say hi, Tom? It's my boy. Adam, my boy in the house. Who else we got out there? Anybody else want to give a shout out? All right. So center of gravity. Let's talk about that, Adam. Because what I've learned recently is center of gravity is if I take this right here, okay, and let's, let's do this. This will be cool as shit. So what do I need to do with one hand? Who was that? I mean, come back up there. I just missed you. There's D. What's up, D? I mean, not D, but come back up. Leave a comment so I can give you a shout out. Because um, I just seen a purple D, but I was looking at something else. Because I just learned an old physics um, thing. And it was about finding center of gravity of, of, of items. Of th not items, of things. Center of gravity of things. So basically, we need string and we need some kind of weight we're gonna make ourselves a little a little pendulum but we're not pendulatum a penduli want to call penduli we're not pendulion we're gonna find center of gravity because adam you just said center of gravity i figured you know what i got something cool to show you guys that i learned so we look at this oh this is all one hand technique too by the way don't do this at home. You might hurt yourself. This is highly, highly contagious. All right. You see what just happened, right? I lost my center of gravity there. Oh, shit. He's got it. Look at this. It can tie a knot with one hand. All right. Let's go ahead and bang this one out. This is going to be an easy peasy. Okay, look at that. Are we hanging this. Oh shit! He dropped it. Nah, right, but we're gonna we're back in. You know what? Cause I'm in the hole, and we're hanging. The hole broke. All right, let's get serious here. I'm just joking around with you guys. So we're going to do this in one hand. We're going to come up. We're going to turn this around. All in one hand, right? And you turn this around. I'm going to make a serious loop. I got a better way, but we ain't got time to put no damn glue gun on. Until you touch that with a glue gun, it's sticking. But anyway, we're, we're down here. I pardon, pardon my, oh, wait, I see a hole right there. Is that a real hole? No, it was a fake hole. Shit, I've been tying nothing. This will give time for some of the people to get on anyway. I got some important stuff to show you guys, especially when it gets to that PMH. You know, you know, the PM, the, the coils itself could transfer iron or stuff like that hardcore through it. Like the iron can keep moving. I think that's kind of important. All right, here we go. We are firing a hole here. And we did drop it, right? We got it hanging. All right. Let's, let's go ahead and do this. So... One of the physics things I learned is, is to find the center of gravity is like taking a pendulum or a pivot point. All right, what happened here? I am tangled up. 
You gotta be freaking kidding me. Center of gravity. Now you say to yourself, you know what? We're looking for a crosshair right here. So basically, I, I kind of screwed up with this being two strings. I think it's one now. It just fell. There we go. We got one string. So basically, get out of the way. All right. So basically, take the pendulum, put a weight on the bottom, hold it in the middle, and make a mark at the top. And that'll, we know you can measure halfway and do the same thing. But basically, the crosshair is that the middle of this becomes the center of gravity to the, to the piece of metal, okay? And what if I had a hole? bore it out in the center of gravity of this piece of iron. What is the difference between the center of gravity <clears throat> with an empty space or with space? Now, guys, right now, I want to see comments flying the hell up. Tell me. What is the difference in center of gravity in an object when you have space or no space? That's right, center of mass, Adam. That's what we're really talking about. So we're gonna we're gonna find the center of mass of this piece. So the center of mass of this, you know, and I'm doing a poor job because I'm I got one hand, guys. But obviously, center of mass would be the straight line, and then you come up halfway, and that would be the center of this mass. If this mass was hollow in the middle here, if I bored a one inch hole in the middle of this mass, what? The question is, what happens to the center of this mass when it's hollow in the center versus or solid? Anybody got any comments? Bring it on. I don't see no comments popping up, guys. Listen, I watch these. After this goes up, I watch it the next day, and I love to read the comments back because I miss most of them. So if I see someone comment back, it goes to the ends. Tommy, 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 Tommy. Tommy just commented. It goes to the ends, guys. Hmm. Come on. I want some more comments. Set, does center of this mass change? Because there is no center. How about that question? Let's go with there. The next question, this question of this is a better defined question. Does the center of mass change if there's no mass in the center? I'm waiting, my brothers, my brohams. All right, so Adam says no change to the center of mass, but it but it moves outwardly. That's 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 a good comment. I like that. I like that. I like that. And in fact, guys, what I'm working on is getting another cell phone. And what we're going to do is have a three-way call talking live now on questions on different things. What do you what do you think about that? Does that bring a little bit better to this live? You guys thumbs up? Do I get a thumbs up? All right, got an up on Adam. Um, I couldn't read that last comment. It flared up and then disappeared on me. And I don't want you to repost it, but that's what I'm saying. 
It's like, we should be able to talk to each other. Who agrees? Who agrees? Tommy. Abundance of mag uh, magnets pushes the magnets out and more individual magnets come in because of the hole. Okay, there you go, Tommy. Got to read out your comment. Obviously, I'm bringing up the question again because you guys are not getting the point. The point. The center mass, the center gravity of this mass that we weighed, which was like two pounds, under two pounds, you're killing me. I, I can't believe this shit. There we go. 2.6 pounds, this son of a bitch. That thing weighs more than that, but you know what? I might be good on distance, but maybe on weights, I'm not that good. Two pounds. Let's, let's start this off. You ready, guys? So stick that son of a bitch to that magnets, okay? This is north. This is south. You guys like that? Let's go ahead and scooch it in front of the PMH, okay? Now let me tell you, this side is south. This side is north. This side is South, this side is north. This is south to south. North to north. Watch this closely. You ready? Son of a motherfucking bitch. Son of a bitch. You guys, right now, if you guys don't know what just happened, I want you to leave comments. I want comments right now. I feel like I'm alone. Where's my comments? Am I, am I delayed on my comments? Who's doing what over here now? We just had 2.6 pounds. No longer over here. You know, Tommy. I, Tommy, I know you're looking right now. Because this shit is serious. Listen, we just transferred inductively a magnetic connection from material. We just bonded material. This son of a bitch bonded this material from here to here. You tell me what's going on. And that thing is stuck like it was stuck. Let's try that again. All right. Let's find the right spot. All right. But remember what I'm saying. This is south. This is north. This is south. This is north. Hmm. Did I not on the last one do it like this? I did, didn't I? So I did it. I, this stuck like this. Hold on. Holy shit. I just realized I just changed something. Ow. I just seen something else happen that I didn't realize earlier. So, these magnets were recently charged. Now, here's a, here's a south, here's a north. Here's a south, here's a north. No, here's a south, here's a south. Here's a north, here's a north. That's what I did on my first run. So, let's go ahead now and move it, and move it over. Obviously, that one lost some magnetism. Maybe, maybe this is screwing the magnets up a little bit. Look at the magnets. They kind of didn't find there. Strangely, that ain't nothing. This, this thing lost its... Holy man, what did we do? 
Look at that, barely going to sell, barely. So these are the magnets that we were messing with. So we screwed the poles up on these right here, okay? They're, 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 if they ain't hold the mat, they ain't hold the piece of metal. Them son of a bitch is useless. So here we go. So we're sticking again over here. So just those magnets. They're be probably the ones we did, and maybe the the thing I think. There you go. We got some good sticky, north and south. So this, this time, we're gonna go ahead and we don't know what what's gonna well. Now, listen, normally when I charge these magnets, the south goes to the north and the north goes to the, to the, to the south, okay? So now we're going to see if we can transfer the energy over the matter to that side by activating this side, okay? So let's go ahead and try that again. And... We got to transfer, okay? Now, I'm thinking that these magnets on this side should be strong. Only only because on these ones here we did that are barely, this one right here, look. It won't even hold up. Hold it up. Won't hold it up, right? And then you go over to this that we just did the same thing. This son of a bitch is hard to pull off. Look at that. So... Even though we put shielding, if you want to call this shielding, it, it basically was for who? Who was the shielding for? Come on, guys, leave me your comments. That thing is stuck right there. So that goes to show you, major right here, that this south and that north, when I had the damn south to south, and I transferred this matter over, these magnets gave up their their um, mm -hmm. negative ions inside of them, and they unlined themselves up because when they <clears throat> think about what happens here, when you have a induction, and I know this from static induction, when you have an induction, especially static induction, when you take three materials and say this is neutral, and this is positive, and this is negative, okay? Charged, charged particles. So, and this is neutral. So we will put the, say this is the positive, you put that neutral near it, and what happens? The neutral is no longer neutral. The negative ions from here realign themselves. If they were lined up all in pieces, they all now put one, one corner is one side, and you wonder about you wonder about segregation. This side becomes another another side. So if this is neutral, nothing happens to this, okay? Because this is neutral. There's no change. But now you have a, a a negative over here. This is positive. This is negative. Now all of a sudden, if you take this negative and put it to the positive, what will happen is if the if if the molecules in this here will all of a sudden now, if that was towards that, your attractions will happen. So what will happen is your one charge will go here, your other charge will go here, and then you'll have a separation on this end here. And this is what I thought is important, especially when you talk about free energy, is that it's, it comes down to really... Uh, in, uh, the type of induction you're talking. And here, with the neutral, you could bring that in close. Don't have to touch. And what will happen is the energy will pull the uh, negative ions from here and overload one of these sides. And when the... One side gets overabundant, not separated, but overabundant, meaning, meaning concentrated, it'll move freely more negative ions outward. So that's where my boy uh, Wilhelm Reich comes in with his energy accumulator by taking organic and inorganic materials, meaning like 
uh, wood and steel or iron or, you know, stuff like that, organic, inorganic. And the inorganic um, would be the metallics. But metallics, there's, you know, do you call a copper metallic? Yeah, only because it's a metal. And, and so is iron it is a metal, but there's obviously major differences between those metals. So you got to watch what metal you use. Any of you guys out there ever get into Wilhelm Reich? I get any thumbs up? A bunch of you guys watching right now. Hydrogen. Adam's talking hydrogen. What do you guys have your own conversation going, I guess? Yeah, pretty much. Yep. All right, Tommy. Tommy got a yes going. So look, this 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 iron bar is still stuck to this side. Accumulator boxes. Okay. Yep. Technically a metal. All right. So listen, it's with Wilhelm Reich. What he was showing us back in the '30s is that it's the material that moves exactly what I just showed you guys. Is that now, the negative ions, the free about energy that's in this bar, when the molecules are lined up proper, are, were transferred from the energy that was in here. Now, remember something that I'm talking about here. This energy is, th these magnets are all basically acting as one. And they all, they're all connected. It was holding on to that iron bar. What happened? Leave your comments right now. Tell me. I want to hear from you guys. What happened? What do you think happened when that iron bar was on that side and all of a sudden it, it's over here? Ed talks about a magnetic current. That's right, Tommy. Ed says it had the ability... To swing magnets. It acts like a living thing. So right now, we're illustrating that this piece of element, this, this, this mass, 2.6 pounds, 2.06 pounds. All right. So here you go. So here we go. Mass is attached over here. Can I get it to attach over here? Any comments? Anybody think that I can move it over? Come on, I don't see no comments. You guys want to see me bounce it to the other side? Nobody's asking about bouncing to the other side. What's going on, my bro hams? Are you kidding me? All right, you think it's attached, right? So I just disconnected everything from it. It's attached over here. So what would I need to do to make it come over here? That's my boy, Assam. I knew you were back there hiding. That's my boy right there. I hope I'm saying your name right. A-S-A-N, Assam. Very smart guy. You got videos out there. I love for my followers to follow your channel, Hassan. You're very intelligent. You're very, very intelligent. There you go. All right. So Hassan already knows. I would have to make these magnets on this side stronger than. Now listen. This side has no power to it. It's not keeping it over here. And I want your comments right now. This has no power keeping that mass on this side, but it's attached. So obviously we have NASCAR of energy running around, okay? Depending on the, the spin of my coils is the right-hand rule on where the current is running. I'm not going to get into that right now, whether it's going this way or whether it's going that way. So when I started adding power to this, 
This side here is the positive. This side's the negative. So let's talk about that. So what do we know? That the negative chases the positive, all right? So if this is the positive, this is the negative. So that means that this energy... So, so Adam says it could produce the same exact energy. Well, let's, let's, let's learn something here because we're dealing with something to me is, is, is monumental. That's why I'm doing this video. It's monumental to think that we can move mass from one end to the other. I'm talking about the moon and the damn earth and the Saturn and, and, and Jupiter and Mars. I'm, I'm talking about mass. And when I do this, I'm really thinking of the big boys. Yeah, individual magnets are the sole barrier of that neighborhood. Just think about that. Think about that. Think about it. Atoms don't care what they are. They're just mass. Mass with what? Motion. Here we go, guys. So we have this side stuck to here okay so we have a race car going let's figure out what direction so <clears throat> looking at my pmh do you guys think the direction is going this way thumbs up or down <clears throat> assam that is one thing that would be good except for one thing these magnets are not strong enough. If I change the poles on this side and drop that, that mass, because of gravity, is going to drop to the ground, and it's not going to go over to here. Why? Because that this is not strong enough. So obviously this is stronger. Now, Tommy, listen, when you put the PMH to wall current, 120, nothing major happens other than the thing is it vibrates. And if you put the bar in the keeper in front of the PMH under 120 presence, this will do this. It'll be stuck there, but it'll vibrate. And sometimes it will vibrate off, but it'll vibrate here. And if you put your hand on there, you can feel the vibration. It's from the 60 cycles just flopping. And you got, you know, based on what what wire you use and how many turns is how much uh, resistance you got in there and how much current you're going to draw through here. But we know these right here are pulling, uh, oh, hell, when we did these, um, I forgot what they were pulling. They were pulling couple amps, and this is a, a 0 0.08 resistance, okay? But let's get back to here because I can actually put on my DC power to that, and I can show you how many amps it pulls. Comparing the strength from one thing to the other. Um, I got to read that comment over. Yo, Ender in the house, Kumar. Got a shout out over there. So we got the mass stuck over here. And obviously, we now are going to do one thing, is we're going to start turning the wheel. And do um, you guys think any? you think we can, do you think we can pull this over by turning the wheel? Any comments? Think we can pull the mass over and attach it? There we go. We got some comments coming in. All right, let's let's get this son of a bitch moving. I gotta watch my hip. So basically, we are not gonna be able to pull it over. We need those straight vertical lines. But what we're going to do is we're going to hook up the oscilloscope to this side with the keeper bar on. And let's go ahead and 
show a difference. All right, so right here, let's, I guess we're good there. So there we go. You know what I did here is I mixed up. Right here we have two channels running, and I'm going to show you the position of where the two channels are. So you see the one running on the top? All right, that's channel two. And then channel one needs to be connected. So we're going to come over here, and we're going to hook up this PMH. And this is going to be channel two. I know last night we were running off the oscilloscope with the Schumann resonance. Pump the jam. You got it, guys. So there you go. Hold on. So we're on this PMH. We got one channel. Now you can see, looks like it's supposed to, right? We got two lines running. You guys see that? Give me a thumbs up. Do you guys see it? You guys see that? You see the two lines running by? Thumbs up. All right. So what I'm going to do now is I am going to bring them together. Okay. We're going to make them one. And I only can do this as close as I can. So that, that's one right there. So what we're doing right here is we're challenging one PMH against the other. 14 gauge. I don't remember how many turns. All right, I'll I'll turn down the brightness. Over here, I got 16 gauge, and I have 1,200 turns, I think, on each side. So we're going to turn the brightness down, intensity. Let's see. Oh, yeah, that's better. That's my boy. So you guys, you guys, you guys are smarter than me. That's why we're all, it takes, hey, man. No man built an island. So let's go ahead, and what we're going to do now is we're going to turn. One side is going to be what? Is it? Would this be a satchable reactor? Do I get a thumbs up? Is this side, because of the crossbar, become a satchable reactor? Anybody know about satchable reactors? Adam says, yes, on saturable reactor. Then what happens to this one where there is no crossbar? Anybody have any comments? Like a wash machine pump. I like that, but the only thing I see is these magnets are not strong enough to go up against something that has a charge, but it can go up against something that doesn't. A field coil. So Adam say this becomes a field coil. Now, what did, what did Ed say in magnetic current? You guys read magnetic current? He, he, he said in that one section about... My best machine. What is the he when he talks about his best machine? What is that talking about? Anybody know what the best machine does? Let's let's put this up, and so you can you see the flow of the of the energy that's flowing in the wheel. Tell me it's not true. I'm back in. <laughs> Yo, guys. Oh, my Lord, I just feel, if I'm not tethered, I'm feathered. Who's out there still? Adam, is that you? <laughs> Yo, Adam, I can't believe this. This is insane. Yeah, they will. 
Hey, Adam, you're going to post them up, right? All right, we're gathering back peeps. <laughs> yeah, friendly deer. All right, so this is what we're going to do. We're charging the phone as we're talking. I am going to go grab a beverage. And I am going to disconnect the phone and resume back. We need to see if we can move that mass over from the field magnet. Well, now it's what? It's a satchable reactor, but we'll talk about that in a second. So hold on, guys. Hey, here's a distinctive sound. Anybody know what this what this material is? Anybody know what that material is from the sound? Anybody know what that material is? <laughs> so we're talking about frequencies, right? Yeah, okay. What else you guys think it is? Anything else? That's right. Foil. All right, so the reason I even brought this out, yeah, wallpaper. Wallpaper for Disney Disney Studios are charging their cell phones where you walk in a room that's all foil in the room with a, a pole in the middle like a stripper joint. An electromagnetic wave. I wonder what that's doing to their brains. So here's your foil. And you guys knew that this was foil from what? Leave your comment. You knew it was foil from what? What what allowed your your brain to think it was foil? What derived that thought? That comment? Leave your comments. I want to see comments. Sorry to hear about your dad passing away, brain cancer. I don't know who that was. It popped right up. Sorry to hear that. Um, Tommy, sorry to hear that. Met so, uh, Asad says metal ting noise. But we're talking about sound, right? Hey, Tommy, man, sorry about that. You, you and I need to talk some point. Um, so we're talking about sound, correct? Sound. So we're dealing with sound. Dealing with sound. Let me put you guys back up there. We're still charging. I need about two more minutes of charging, then I'll walk over to the wheel so I can take my tether off. But we're dealing with sound. So why is sound important? Please tell me. Sound. What is sound going to do besides excite our ears? Can it do anything else? Anybody out there know what this is? Do I have any musicians out there? Do anybody know what this is? Anybody know what this is? Anybody have seen this before? Weird shaped piece of wood. 
hollow cord, I guess. So it's becoming a, a resonant chamber. What is this? It's got a name on it. First act. I found it in my backyard. Found this in my backyard. I know, Adam. So this side here, what, what you, we have here in Wavelengths, this is what we're going to talk about, what my phone's charging. So the, the cable starts here. It goes here and goes to a, a, a mechanism here that tightens. Uh, one side tightens, one side's fixed. But all of a sudden, when it gets to the next one, it becomes two strings. Look, here's one. It goes all the way down, goes around, and comes back. So we're talking about more than twice the length. And that happens to the same one up, the same one up, the same one up, and the same one up. So we, we literally have double strings. Would you call that a double octave? Would that be? Because your octave, first octave, would be halfway of the length of the wire, correct? Do I get a thumbs up on that? Length of wire, first octave, half. First wire we have here on that sound is one length. Second and third strings be, are tied together, wrapped around the other end. Listen to these. Different harmonic. Oh, difference. There's a difference. Phone's almost charged. It's time to almost get back over to the wheel. But these are cool stuff. Badly out of tune, yeah. Well, I have nothing to tune it till. So, two, you know what I mean? So I just started tightening out on these ends here. And I guess tomorrow I'll sit there and I'll pluck one. And then I'll... Maybe use my tuning forks. Oh, that'd be a cool thing to do. Hold on, guys. So, let's see what we have. Here we got right here a, a, a 512 frequency, and it's a C. So let, let's, let's hear what the C is first. Ready? Oh, hold on, hold on, hold on. That bottom one, the single one, sounds like. Let, let's, let's go back to that, ready? Let's pluck this. Let's pluck the string first. No, that's not the same. That's not the same. That was a high pitch. None of these strings matches frequency. Let's change frequency and see if we can get there. All right, here's a 256. No, I'm too high. We're too high over there. So... We'll go past the sound part of this video right now.
get the tools ready. You guys know what that is? See what's in the middle of it? Some brass. What are we gonna do with that? We're gonna have some damn fun. I didn't even get started in my damn thing before my power killed. I had some cool stuff to show you guys. Jesus, man. Who would ever know? Tethered. You gotta be tethered. Where's this wireless energy when we need it? How come somebody hasn't invented something that just self-charges? Got enough power stored right now, guys. Sorry about the delay. Here we go. All right. So, before we got disconnected, what's up, Justin, in the house? Any wind going through the Vs? Sure there is. There's little chambers in here. Well, in a sense, it's like a, it's like a cog. So, right now, we have... The mass stuck over here. Let's go ahead and... Remove the bar. Let's re-stick the bar again. And we're just going to stick it to the magnet, okay? But what we're going to do this time... Remember, this is north, this is south. This here is south, and this is north. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to... Realign up. Let's move back a little bit. Get some bit some distance. Okay. Let's go ahead and hook up some power. Don't want to blow the O-scope up. Hell no. That thing is a gem. I can't believe I was doing what I was doing without some O-scoping. All right, so here we go. Fire in a hole. We got transfer. So we stole. <clears throat> the negative ions, and I'm not using the word electrons. F electron, I can't even move that. F electrons, there's no electrons. Thompson, love you, no electrons. They are negative ions. The negative side is what moves, not the positive side. The negative chases positive, so the positive is the still part. So now, the question is, can we transfer this back over to this side? Number one. Number two, that's right, negative chases positive. I do, right here, my bro, my bro ham. Here's your compass, south, 
north, south, north. So right now, we have something going on here. Let's disconnect the power from it. Okay. So now we have, this is south. This is north. South, north. And then we have a keeper bar on here. So what's going on in a keeper bar? There's your north. There's your south. Seems like it's been extended out. There's a reason why it extends out like that. <clears throat> It's it's all based on how far back the coils sit from the outer prong ends. The outer prong ends are the strongest part of a, a coil core. Okay, so here we're bending iron around. So now we don't have a solid state of collar, of a center core. We got a wrap around. If I take this coil out of place. If this right hand rule, let me see. So basically, if this one here, so if this is the south for, for, for shits and giggles, let's go through this. So here we go. So look at the freaking, see the red coming out of the coil? That means this son of a bitch is wound that way. So south, remember I told you that was south. Current's running that way on that sucker. When this gets fired up, it's drawn in and current's running that way. But we just said negative chases positive, right? So look, let's look at the wind on this. Here you go. So look at the wind right here. So that wind's going that way. This wind, oh shit, this wind, my bad. This wind in the south is going that way. So it's pushing out this bar. Because the coil's going over that way. This side, the, the, the coil's wrapped this way. So the, it's going this way. So there's your north chasing your south. Plain and simple. With well, a damn bar still stuck to it. No power. Let's go ahead and see if we can transfer this coil over to here. What do you guys think I have to do? Damn, I missed, I missed half of your statement, Asaf. Oh, shit. Can you, bar should be removed. All right, but listen, is this right now not become a satchable reactor? Think about this. All right, I'm going to put this out there to you guys. A satchable reactor is by taking a toroid. Let's, let's do this on paper real quick. It's taking a toroid, okay? Center hole, center of gravity, center of gravity of mass, okay? Taking a toroid. This side right here. And this side right here, this is the AC. This is the DC. Low voltage. Satchable reactor, okay? Low voltage on this side. AC, we get to pick from the voltage using a, a variable capacitor or resistance, variable resistance. We get to, to we get to control this side of the toroid. So let's come back over here, guys. All right, what's on this side? Adam, you know, I hate being tethered. Tethered. Adam, don't you think we could figure out how to be untethered all the time? Adam, 
through our conversations. Don't you think we become untethered? Ball and chain, I know. Yep. Hell yeah, he says. Yeah, we can figure it out. Look like I got Vinny right here. He's over here checking out the works. All right. Ender. Ender, Ender. Guess what, buds? That's what we're going to do. We're going to get that dual PMH running the wheel. Hey, Hassan. Listen, here I am. I'm plugged in. I'm tethered. I hate this. I feel like I'm being controlled by the white man. I don't like it. Yeah, I know, but <clears throat> my phone, our phones are everything. Are all right? Who's watching me on a uh, Who's watching me on a phone right now? Give me thumbs up. Who's watching me on a phone? Thumbs up. So we got Fred, we got Adam, we got Inder Kumar phones. So we got three people on phones watching. Nobody else? We got a lot of people watching. So we only got... You're on your computer, Adam? So who's watching me from a laptop? So we got laptops watching, right? Desktop. All right, Adam. So we got one one desktop, some laptops, and we got a few phones. <laughs> All right, Osama. Listen, that high pitched voice. Let's get rid of that right now. Let's let's bring that voice over here. So remember, I was talking about. During the first problem we had with my power being lost is I took the foil and I was shaking the foil, right? And what I wanted you guys to understand is your recognition of what it was was based on sound only, right? Can I get a thumbs up? Sound only. It's the only thing you had. You didn't see anything, but you heard it, right? Sound. So what I'm getting at is that the universal thing in the universe is sound. All right. What I mean by that is that everything that is to leave an impression is first done through sound. So that tells me that sound is the true sound base that Ed talks about in Magnetic Current. How many of you guys read Magnetic Current? And he talks about you should have a good sound base. And I believe now the sound base he's talking about is sound because he has a, a, a tuning room. He has a room, a chamber, a sound chamber. He has what I just put out to you guys by listening. You all knew it was foil. And guess what else, guys? What does foil, what in Mother Nature, the next question, you're going to love this. What is the next thing in mother nature that sounds like foil leave me a comment come on no comments what else sounds like foil out there what 
There you go, Fred. Exactly. Lightning. Crack, crack. It's the same. It's the same bandwidth. Let's just go there. Is that fair enough to say? Assam, good, good try, but no. Lightning. It's the same bandwidth. And, and in that bandwidth, you had deviations of that bandwidth, which lightning, if you take sheet metal and you were to move the sheet metal and vibrate it, it sounds like lightning. That's a variation from the foil, but I still hear the lightning in the foil because I'm kind of ear sensitive. I used to be a DJ. So I'm used to beats, I'm used to high temps, tweeters, and I'm used to mid-range speakers and setting up the sound system. So I have lost knowledge in me, I'll say. Here I am 30 years later. Lost knowledge of stuff I used to know that now comes in reference to Mr. Edley Scallon. Mr. Edley Scallon, the man that talks about what? All over the place this guy is talking. I did a lot of weddings. <laughs> they do have destructive. You can see that, right? And you can see it's very destructive. All right. So, if there's no sound in outer space, and this is the first time I ever used this expression, outer space. So if there's no sound in outer space, and sound is only in a cavity, that means that anything that is a crystal would provide a cavity. For that frequency to vibrate in space itself. Cool stuff now. Let's get it move on right here. So let's go back. We're going to go ahead and we're going to... Um, how are we going to do this? We're going to pull this off. Let's go ahead and stick that. And we are going to move this forward. And we're going to transfer this mass over here. And then we're going to transfer the mass from here back over here. This is what we're going to do right now. So, by doing so, we're going to use this electromagnet. And I'm looking for the ends, which I just found. There's one. And we're going to go ahead and overpower the V magnets and suck it over to the other side. So you know, that's south and that's north. This is south and that's north. So north, south, no south, north. Let's move the energy over. You ready? All right. So you can see that we transferred it over. Right now it's stuck pretty good. What I'm going to do is pull this back. Okay. And we're going to take the one cable. All right, guys, you're going to like this. The one cable that's connected to that car battery. And I'm going to put it right here. Okay. Okay. Pull out the cable. So what is really happening here? What we're going to do is we're going to put two turns on this side. And then we're going to come up the opposite angle and go two turns on that side. And when I now listen, bear with me. I got one hand here. See, I got some kick out. What I want to do... 
is get a piece of tape. <laughs> I got I gotta get some tape. All right, so we got unplug power. Yeah, man, piece of tape. Got to get the tape. Got tape, tape, tape. One thing good about your workshop when you know where everything is. When you need it on the fly. This is the fly, right? I'm using my knees. All right. Bada bing. Let's get a double wrap going. We got two wraps. And we're going to stick some tape on the bottom. That's why they don't do live TV. All right, we're gonna make that work. There you go. So, thanks to the tape. Maybe I should put a little extra in there. You know what's gonna happen? It's gonna give out. There you go. So let's um I'm just gonna scoot that over. All right, and then we're gonna move that there. Let's give it a test run. So now we're gonna unplug. Let's put my power back in my phone. All right, so now I'm going to go ahead and touch. No, I'll leave that there. But I guess I have to get it in front. And we're going to move it closer. Oh, no. Oh, no. All right, guys, this is, this is beyond falling apart. It fell apart. I don't know what to tell you. I'm just going to say we're going to start over. I'll tell you. I don't quit. South, north, north, south. No. South, north, south, north. Let's fire this thing up. This time, let's step it back. It was kind of stupid, the magnet. Let's give it some distance. Give a shout out to my peeps out there. I see there's a lot of guys on here, girls and everybody. Let's go ahead and fire in a hole. Let's transfer this thing over. And we got a disconnect. Let's do this again. Let's move it over. Oh, man. Good gapage right there. Okay, so that means these magnets are strong. If this was up closer to the front with the gap, well, let's just do that. Let's Superman it. So this is what I call Superman. It's like I brought the energy of the magnetic energy to the front lines. And I'm even going to keep a better distance. Look at that distance, okay? We'll bring the coils up a little bit further. All right, there you go. Look at that gap. Two-finger gap. But I brought the coils closer to the prong ends. It should pull it over. Let's see what we get. Well, it made it release. Let's try this again. Let's go. Fire and all. All right, we got... Big jumpage right there. The order was that was south and that was north. That was south and that was north. So we transferred right here in opposite poles. But now we're going to do the same thing 
this time we're going to switch the poles. Instead of it being south and north, we're going to go north and south. All right, let's find a better combination of north and south. Hmm. For some reason, north and south don't like to stick together too much. And here we go. So now we got south to south, north to north. What do you think it's going to do? So is that bar going to jump across? Any comments? <clears throat> is that mass going to jump across even though we are dealing with identical poles on both sides? All right. All right, here we go. So fire in a hole. So we're going to activate the field coil. Wait a minute. What just happened? Guys, leave your comments. What just happened? It didn't go across. It separated and fell to the ground. Let's try that again. Because I'm a man of a perpetual. Well, I'm not trying to achieve anything, but we're going to try. You've seen it jump across the field when we did opposite poles. Now we're doing the same poles. The question was, will it jump across? What will it do? And right there, it's strong because south to north. Well, we know what that's going to do. We don't want that. We want to just go north. No, nope, we want south. There you go. Right there. So south to south, north to north. So we're looking to check the mass. If we can get the mass to move across airspace by electromagnetic field. With a two finger gap. I like that, Adam. The hysteresis of the uh, of the iron. So let's try that again, though. We need to see exactly how these uh, magnets are going to react. Fire in a hole. All right. So we are still connected and we are there. I just let go. And I'm wondering if I should have let go the field. I, I, I think what I seen was it dropped. And because I kept the field on, it sucked it to it. We got to do that again. That was pretty cool, I must say. So we're looking at... Um, Some sticky power there. So let's do this again because I feel like if I, I'm going to just touch it now and let it go. And, <clears throat> well, let's try it out. So right now. All right. It's not stuck to the metal. It's down on the ground. And if I use the south to north, and I do the same thing, nothing changes except for now on the poles are the opposite. It's stuck to the other side. Now let's go ahead and try and see if we can move it back to this side. 
So that means we would ha we can't have south to south. We would have to keep the south to north. And I would have to increase the strength of these magnets on this side. And I'm going to do that by just taking the same cable, not doing anything else, just changing the, just keeping the cable. And when it touches this cable, we should see it bounce over. So let's go ahead and we're going to say south to north. So we're going to take this to that. All right. The cool thing about this is that by changing the direction of the wire, it reverses the poles, even though it's the same length of wire. Now I'm going to go ahead and touch this. We should see it jump over. Won't pull it over from that span. Let's see if we can move it closer. Now think about this. This is connected to nothing. The energy that's trapped in there is stuck to this mass. And we're going to try to pull this mass over. Now I had to move it closer. Let's try it again. Nope. I may have the winds wrong. I see the wheel turning though. The wheel's turning. Wait a minute. Oh, we are. We're going to do that. We're going to get the wheel moving with the PMHs. Trust me. Be patient. We're just doing studies right now on different things. So here I am. The, the mass is on the other side. Correct? Did we not move the mass over? Thumbs up. All right, is mass moved over to the other side, guys? What the hell are we looking at? Is that mass moved over? All right, we moved the mass over to the other side. All right, all right, so listen to me. All these steps are lessons of learning how to control DC. When I talk about a, a, a satchable reactor, I talk about DC controlling AC. DC controlling AC's current. How do we control the current in DC if we were using outside sources? And I believe that is the next step from DC to magnetism. The, the, the 90 degree angle. So listen, so this, we're not dealing with turning the wheel tonight. I know you guys, you want to see the wheel turn. It's the next step and we're working on it. We're working on it. Hey, check this out. Command center. Uh, let me fire it up for you. I figured Ed's wheel needs a good command center. So check out this command center. Let's go ahead and give this thing. What does it need for power? Hold on. Where is my power off? Ooh, over here. All right, so we're going to undo the craziness. And we're going into the 12-volt battery. Hopefully you guys can see that. All right. 12-volt battery, fully charged, 13. Well, probably a little bit more than that. 20 volts, 19 
8.66 volts. And I blew these out a while back. They're showing that. I know I got 13 volts in there. But this right here is a voltage regulator. Love it. This right here is just breadboards. This right here is a little oscillator. These show voltage, which I'll replace some of the voltages wrong. It's like 13.30 volts. And, um, and then these are one farad 5.5 volt capacitors, super caps. We're going to charge these. Now think about this. Wheel moving, charging, low voltage through. I know Ed didn't have this stuff, but I do. I got the wheel. I got some PMHs in the house. And then we got some freaking uh, command center. Did you notice my video earlier? And I was saying we're going to make a video at 9. I have, was driving and I had my speedometers and stuff lit up. Same thing. This here, well, crazy with this. This, I don't know, it's like 1,300 watts. You could put 24 volts in it. And I could come out of these two prong ends here. And I can make my own coil. And I can melt metal. In fact, I got a crucible here somewhere. I don't know where it's at, but I can melt metal. And then on top of that, it's a ZVS. And I can use it for a frequency into a coil situation. Yeah, induction heater. You know that, Adam. Great, great. But also as an induction heater, think about this. If it's melting metal by using magnets... The coil that I build, I've been playing with this shit. And I want to show you guys. I got different coils. You like that connection? They don't even come with that. Different connections. I got different coils that, that I have size-wise for the primary for this oscillator. It's crazy, this thing. If you guys buy this, this is this is insane. It was like $38, $36. I had it for about two months now. And finally now I'm just breaking it out. And it's it's a beast. It melts metal on top of that. It sends out high frequency um, waves that you can put in a Tesla coil. It's ZVS. It's a great oscillator. But that's an oscillator and so is this. This can only take three and a half volts. I got this set at 5.6. Oh, you know why? Because I'm charging each one. So this one right here is charged. That one's charged. And that's my third one. Now, one thing good about this is you can control. These are cheap, too. This was like $13. Bought that a few months back. Control, control the voltage. These are great. They show they show current and the wattage you're using. Command center, right? Freaking command center. So I'll be able to do a lot of cool experiments with this, incorporating this, but we'll get the wheel turning. And I just wanted to show you that we can transfer over the mass from one end to the other. That was electromagnetic induction at its finest. All right, guys. All I got to say is you got the best out of me tonight. Sorry about my phone giving out. Um, happy Saturday night. Hope you guys are all safe, healthy, prosperous. And let the dream go on, guys.
My brothers, you got it. Love you all. Peace out.